Well, hello everybody and welcome to today's Video Devo. I decided that since it is Halloween, I would dress up myself. As you can clearly see, I am dressed up as a banana slug with my banana slug hat and my yellow parka forming a perfect banana slug costume. And I thought I'd just kind of go trick-or-treating here in the office since that's where I'm recording this Daily Devo today. And why don't I just start by trick-or-treating and knocking on the worship department's office. Let's see what happens. Trick or treat. Oh. What are you? Clearly I'm a banana slug. Are you sure? What else you would might, I be? You kind of look like a bumblebee. Do you have candy? I do. Awesome. Thank you. Just drop it go. in my basket. Perfect. Thank you very much. Have fun. I think it's time to go do the Daily Diva for today. Thank you. All right, let's just walk back into my office, shall we? And we will do today's Daily Devo. And I think perhaps I should take off this ridiculous Halloween hat and uh, do the Devo with you. Well, seriously, today we are in Acts chapter 15. Now, we covered this <laughs> in uh, the book and in the uh, video for small groups earlier in the Acts Odyssey, but I wanted to get back to this to point out some great principles, seriously now, in Acts chapter 15 for how to discern God's will. Because this is such a, a huge question for so many Christians. How do you discover God's will for your life? God does not always drop a sign from heaven that, that tells you what to do when you are at a fork in the road. So how do you make wise choices? Well, in Acts chapter 15, the council in Jerusalem is debating what is a Christian? That is a pretty major deal. So how are they going to determine God's will on this huge question? Here's some really important principles for discerning God's guidance in your life. There's really just four. Number one, look at God's actions in the world. Notice how God is moving, what God is blessing. Don't just ask God to bless your decisions. Look to see what kinds of decisions God is already blessing. This is what they do in Acts 15. Luke says everybody listened as Paul and Barnabas and Peter all talked about what God was doing among the Gentiles. So look to God's actions. And then number two, Look to God's word. James says that he can accept the Gentile conversions as genuine because they're backed up by God's word. And he quotes the prophet Amos. Don't ever make a decision that contradicts the word of God. So look at God's actions. Look at God's word. And number three, seek counsel from God's people. So God's actions, God's word, and God's people. Never make a decision without running it by some people that you know are mature. Look at Paul here. He does not just decide this on his own. He puts himself in a position where he is taking advice and taking the lead from all these other godly people in the Jerusalem council. So you look to God's actions, God's word, God's people, and then go ahead and take godly initiative. In Acts 15, there's no vision. There's no angelic call. There's no bright light. There's no special word. There's no oracle. There's just logical, responsible concern and a conclusion. God does not want to give you orders about every single step you take. That's what you do to an infant. He wants you to be mature. He's not interested in robots. He doesn't want cult-like followers who have to wait for some special feeling before they take any action. As a Christian, you are free to take initiative. You can do what's on your heart as long as it's godly and biblical and sensible. Don't wait for supernatural direction. If you see an opportunity to act in a Christian way, do it. Now, you don't have to wait for supernatural direction, but of course you trust God to direct supernaturally when he chooses, and that is huge. You're believing in the power of the Holy Spirit to guide you when God wants to guide you, but until that point, you are going to take a look at God's action, God's word, seek counsel from God's people, and then take godly initiative. Here's the point. It is always easier to steer a moving car than a parked car. So move the car, trusting that God is sovereign and he can direct you. So how's God going to guide you today? Where is God going to guide you? The important thing is wherever you go, 
Whatever you do, you take initiative and you stay confident of the power of the Spirit of Jesus in you. And you trust in him completely to guide you and empower you. And remember, God's guidance does not mean everything will go smoothly, as Paul is about to experience in an adventure that involves fortune tellers and riots and earthquakes. And that all starts in tomorrow's Devo. Hey, have a great day today. Stay safe out there, and we will see you tomorrow.